Hi, this is Carol Springer. I'm with Gabriel Sales. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to create an engagement studio in Pardot Lightning. So first of all, how you know you're in Pardot Lightning is if you go to your waffle here, go to view all, and there be, might be two Pardots. The one that says B2B marketing automation underneath it tells you you're in Pardot Lightning. I actually renamed mine Pardot Lightning to make it very obvious. So I click on that. <clears throat> And these are all called apps. So this is my app dashboard. So here's my Pardot dashboard. And Engagement Studio is our nurture program. And it is an automated program. So it is in the automations area. The nav bar is over here, Engagement Studio. I was just on that. So the important thing to know about Engagement Studio and how it's different than some of the other features in Pardot is that it is a self-auto-save system. So be really careful. If I go into like, oh yeah, I want to start editing things in here and I'm, I start getting rid of things. I said, oh, I don't want that email. I want a different email. I delete. I don't, I can't undo and get it back. And so that could be very dangerous. Sometimes you could end up deleting a whole system, a, a whole area at a time. So I'm just going to go from copying one. So I'm in engagement studio, studio and I'm over here and I'm afraid I don't want to make a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this here. Okay. And so now I have copy of test two. Go in here. I can hit edit. And again, there's no save. So once I start editing, I'm editing. Okay. So I can edit the name of it here or in this area right here. So test three. Okay. And I'm going to put in my 2021 folder. That's my best practice. There's an area for description. I definitely um, advise taking advantage of that. And then the recipient list is who you're gonna send to and the suppression list, who will be removed. So the important thing to know that some systems don't do is when you have a recipient list, just because they start it um, and they're on the suppression, well, if they start it, doesn't mean they're gonna go all the way through. If someone is on the customer list, but also on the suppression list, they will never start it or if they get added to the suppression list because they took some action, e.g. filled out a form, adds them to a suppression list, that will stop them in their tracks. If they receive email one, that's all they'll get. They will not continue. If somehow they get removed from that suppression list, they'll finish up in the uh, engagement program where they left off. Okay. And so we have some decisions here. What days of the week do we want to send these? I want to send it Monday through Friday. That's per my best practice for most of my B2B clients. And I can change the time. I wanna go have it start at 6 a.m., no problem. And just note what time zone you're in. And please don't hit this until you have studied up on this. This could make people go through the program every day. So it takes some understanding to be able to allow this. So pretty much always keep that unchecked. <clears throat> So now I have my engagement program. So right now I'm just gonna add someone to a tag, see if they have a tag on there. That's not a common thing. Instead, maybe I wanna check something else. Actually, I don't like this at all. Delete it, I'll see what happens. Oh no, I can't undo, but I know what I'm doing, so no problem. So I wanna listen for an event. Listen, did someone fill out a form and again, this will, this will only take customers that have filled out a form. Prospect filled out a form. Actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to do, I'm going to find out what, um, what state they're in, okay? So evaluate a statement is a Pardot prospect default field. State, for example, state is, you have to know how your CRM fills out state. Is it CA for California or is it spelled out California? So you want to understand how Salesforce works for that. So state is CA. Yes, I want to check that out. And then it's going to give me a yes or no. And so yes, they're going to go down this path. No, then it's, I'm just going to end it, for example. So if they're not in California, I don't want them to get that. So I want to send this just to my customers in California. Again, this is one, one example of how to split I would probably actually find a dynamic list of all my customers in California first, but there's a lot of use cases why you might wanna do it this way or that way, okay? But I just really wanna help you understand the features of how this goes. So 
it goes down a path, then you can add to Salesforce as a campaign, but I want to put in here, let's send them an, e send them an email first, do something, send email. And you can just leave it empty. So I want to send an email right away, maybe to everyone. And then I want to see if they're in California. And then maybe I'm going to send them something else, add them to a, a Salesforce campaign, for example. I want to create a task. There are tons of things you can do. So when you have time, just go through and look at all the options of everything that you can do. Assigning to a user is what triggers a brand new Pardot prospect to go into Salesforce. And <clears throat> You can just look at all these different options for yourself. Okay, and really I like to keep this as simple as possible. So the more you can do in the list, the dynamic lists are extremely powerful. Um, sales Pardot dynamic lists can look at any field in leads, any field in contacts, custom and default fields. It can look at account fields and it can also look at default or custom fields and opportunities. So again, very, very powerful for both building lists to send to and to suppress, okay? So when it's time to test this, you just go here, and this helps you understand like what day these, these emails will go out, okay? So I'm gonna make a decision here, yes, and the email's gonna go on the 8th, and everything else is gonna happen the same day. So I'm not doing any waits except for this tag here. And the reason I put this tag in here is Maybe I later at some point, I'm gonna to wanna to decide to add some additional actions in this campaign. I don't wanna to have to rebuild it. So I can just put in a 360 degree or 60 day tag there, just gives me a little time to leave it open. And then when I go back to build it, I say, okay, now I can go, okay, now I wanna send another email. Maybe I didn't have it ready. I'm afraid it's gonna go out by mistake. Wait, five days. But again, if this time has passed already, I think it might not work. So you definitely want to test that out. Okay. And then when it's time to start, you hit the start button. It's going to tell you you have some errors. I have a validation error here because I don't have the tag in the system. And But one thing to know, when you hit start, it's going to say what time, immediately, in the future. And then you hit, you hit yes, start. And then it's going to ask you one more time, are you sure? Because we don't, once it goes, it goes. There's no turning back, okay? So make sure you know what you're doing and make sure it's turned on. And you'll also get an email notification that this has launched. So that's just one more way to check to make sure it goes. And it could take sometimes a couple hours before the emails start getting sent out. So just take note of that. It all depends on kind of what server farm you're with with Salesforce. So that is Engagement Studio, quick, fast, easy. Um, there's a lot of nuances to it. So uh, make some comments if you have any questions and I'll try to answer those for you or reach out to Gabriel Sales. Thank you.